Hey there, movie enthusiasts. Today, let's dive into the 1966 film, The Professionals. This classic western, directed by Richard Brooks, takes us on a thrilling adventure set in the Mexican desert. Starring Burt Lancaster, Lee Marvin, and Claudia Cardinale, it's a tale of four rugged experts hired to rescue a kidnapped woman. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, have you ever shared a laugh, gasp, or tear with The Professionals? We bet you have a cherished memory connected to this movie. Tell us about it in the comments below. But wait, there's more. As we unfold the story, get ready for a roller coaster of funny, shocking, and even sad facts about the film. Trust us, you won't want to miss a single detail. Have you ever felt inspired or impacted by this classic? Share your personal stories with us. We'd love to hear about the moments that made the professionals a lasting memory for you. So, grab your popcorn, hit play, and join us on this journey. Don't forget to share your own cherished memories and personal experiences in the comments below. Your stories make the cinematic adventure even richer, and that's a wrap for now. Stay tuned for more movie insights. In the mid-1960s, a television series emerged that took viewers on thrilling adventures through the lens of two rugged mercenaries navigating dangerous missions for a fictional organization. Set against the backdrop of a time when action-packed westerns dominated TV screens, this show stood out for its innovative storytelling and unforgettable characters. Following the escapades of these two operatives, each episode offered a roller coaster of action, suspense, and moral dilemmas. From intense shootouts to heart pounding interrogations, audiences were kept on the edge of their seats, eagerly anticipating the next daring mission. What set this series apart was its commitment to gritty realism and attention to detail, portraying the harsh realities of covert operations without sugarcoating. As the characters faced challenges of loyalty, betrayal, and redemption, Viewers were drawn into a world where the line between right and wrong blurred. Despite airing over five decades ago, this show remains a timeless classic, beloved by fans both old and new. Its impact on subsequent action-packed TV shows and movies is undeniable, solidifying its place in television history. So whether you're a seasoned fan or just discovering it for the first time, prepare yourself for an exhilarating journey that will leave you wanting more. Ralph Bellamy observed that Richard Brooks, the director, possessed a commanding presence, never relying on a megaphone, even during outdoor scenes. In 1966, The Professionals, facing formidable competition, secured a unique nomination for Best Adapted Screenplay amidst the Best Picture nominees. The shoot encountered relentless challenges rain, snow, sleet, scorching sun, intense desert heat, and an unexpected flash flood, testing the resilience of the cast and crew. Despite the adversities, the production pressed on, creating a film that, although not the center of the best picture spotlight, earned recognition for its screenplay. The professional's journey unfolded against the backdrop of unpredictable weather, embodying the tenacity required to bring a vision to life on the big screen. Jack Palance, known for his portrayal of the menacing gunslinger Jack Wilson and Shane, served as the inspiration for the comic book villain Phil Defer in Lucky Luke Contra Phil Defer. Robert Ryan, alongside John Houseman and Sidney Harmon, established the theater group at the University of California at Los Angeles in 1959. Nearly a decade later, in 1968, Ryan co-founded the Plumstead Playhouse Repertory Company, this time with Henry Fonda and Martha Scott. Burt Lancaster expressed interest in playing Don Vito Corleone in The Godfather before Marlon Brando landed the role, although he was never under consideration for the part. During the making of the film, tensions arose between the two lead actors, Burt Lancaster and Lee Marvin. Lancaster, who had previously worked with the director, Richard Brooks, found Marvin's alcoholism problematic on set. Brooks, fearing a confrontation between the two, stepped in to defuse the situation. Despite their differences, the actors managed to deliver captivating performances on screen. Burt Lancaster, known for his dedication to his craft, insisted on performing his own stunts, even at the age of 52. However, it's uncertain whether he actually did all of them. For instance, during the rock climbing scene, a stuntman likely stood in for Lancaster due to the filming techniques used. Despite the challenges faced during production, The Professionals remains a classic example of a Western film showcasing the talent of its cast and crew. In their 50s, during the filming of the 1966 movie, the professionals, the principal male actors, except for 42-year-old Lee Marvin, insisted on executing their own stunts. Woody Strode, uniquely tall among black stuntmen, performed all his stunts, while Burt Lancaster, age 52, undertook most, including hanging upside down in Coyote Pass and traversing the moving train's roof. Despite studio objections, Lancaster's climb up the cliff was replaced by a stuntman. 
Jack Palance, equal in height to Strode, used a double for scenes involving a horse fall to prevent serious injuries. Palance, noted for his imposing presence, left a lasting impression on Richard Widmark. Having worked with Palance in Panic in the Streets, Widmark called him the toughest guy he'd ever met. During a scene requiring a gun strike, Palance unexpectedly used a real gun, knocking Widmark unconscious. In a 1986 interview, Palance's method acting extended off-screen as he beat on Zero Moss Tell, causing the latter to end up in the hospital after a week of filming. The 79th Annual Academy Awards in 27 paid a special tribute to Jack Palance, marking a significant acknowledgement of his contributions to the industry. Lee Marvin, Robert Ryan, and Director Brooks, all former Marine Corps privates, found irony in the fact that their film's success rested on the shoulders of privates. Marvin shared this anecdote during production, highlighting the unexpected twists of fate. In another instance, Claudia Cardinale's stunt double suffered a severe injury during a scene involving dynamite. Despite having no prior experience riding horses, Cardinale herself performed the stunt, emerging unscathed for the final cut. Interestingly, Lee Marvin declined roles in two William Friedkin-directed films, The French Connection and Sorcerer. After his role in The Professionals, Burt Lancaster turned down offers for two other films. He deemed The Wild Geese to be inferior and couldn't come to terms for a shanty. As for Ralph Bellamy, he had an intriguing venture of his own. He established the Ralph Bellamy Players, his very own stock company, which toured various cities including Nashville, Evanston, and Iowa. From 1926 to 1930, he immersed himself in the world of theater, taking on more than 400 roles throughout his nine years in repertory and touring companies. In addition to his theatrical endeavors, Bellamy was also a member of the Lambs, an esteemed actors club founded in New York back in 1874. These details offer a glimpse into the diverse pursuits of these two actors during their respective careers. In The Professionals, Jack Palance portrayed roles akin to those he shared with Christopher Lee in Tales of the Haunted. Palance tackled Count Dracula in Dracula, while Lee embodied the character across multiple films. Similarly, Palance took on Dr. Edward Hyde in The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, a role that echoed Lee's portrayal in I, Monster. The film's theme of a band of skilled but morally ambiguous individuals echoes similar motifs in other works like The Dirty Dozen, The Devil's Brigade, and The Magnificent Seven. Additionally, Robert Ryan was initially slated to depict Commodore Matt Decker in The Doomsday Machine, but was replaced by William Wyndham. Wyndham imbued the character with a different essence, portraying Decker in a more tragic light. 